Grab your snow shovels, war gamers. It's late February, and the battles in the White Queen's War are coming fast and furious. We just had a little snowstorm a few days ago. It's February 23rd, 24th, and General Typhonis and General Irwin are squaring off again. Unfortunately for General, General Irwin, who was victorious in their first meeting, he was ordered to dispatch a good 12 AP of his fresh troops up to General Meltzer, who is eyeing General Lackey. These, these flags should probably be, be swapped out a little bit. General Lackey was forced to retreat after he was beaten at the Battle of Dakisville. So we're going to move those over a little bit. They're kind of holding tight and waiting for things. A little too fairly matched for either of these guys to go at each other, at least until the 26th when General Meltzer gets a huge bit of reinforcements. He's racing General Lackey, whose wounded are going to recover and rejoin him. So I think with a 12, 13 AP advantage, Meltzer is going to jump back on Lackey. General Lackey, for his part, before the last battle, sent some reinforcements down here to General Typhonus. So what we're talking about today is the second meeting of General Typhonus, who received his reinforcements on the 20th and immediately set out cross-country and within three or four days, caught up to General Irwin, who is now barely holding on with a small 32 AP force. And really what we're looking at here, if you want to put this in some, some context, just, just look at that. You don't even need to be able to read the words and you can see it's not looking good for the White Queen's forces down here. You've got nine line infantry on the part of the Tenebrans. And in addition to that, you've got a light infantry, two grenadiers, and then you've got six light horses, plus one battery of artillery almost as an afterthought. Now, this is part of the way the attrition of this campaign works. There were two batteries, but one battery lost, I think, six guns. The other one lost seven. So they have the first and second whale gate have been combined into one battery. And ultimately, from the way these two armies are trading victories, it looks like this is going to be a war of attrition. And it's a war of attrition, at least in the South, that the White Queen cannot afford. Because to the nine line infantry, she's defending with four line infantry. To the six light horse that General Typhonus brings to the party, she can only send invitations to four light horse horses. Nine to four. The only real advantage that she has is she has, excuse me, that's only three light horses. The only real advantage she has is that she does have one heavy horse, and she's got an extra battery of cannons, which is going to help. General Irwin on the defensive, but the thing that's really going to help is going to be, as always, is General Winter on the side. Actually, that doesn't apply because we know that there's light rain coming on the 24th. If the battle is fought on the 23rd, then that light rain on the 24th is going to affect how the losers come out. I think what we may do is whoever loses is going to suffer an automatic negative one. Well, I don't know. Does light rain help the retreating force or the victorious force? Your old host here at the Joy of Wargaming is going to have to do some research, maybe post to some forums. I'm a big fan of Lead Adventure Forum. You can find me there posting under the nom de guerre. War, war in a box. Okay, so the, what we're looking at, though, is on the 23rd... Yeah, I forgot. It's the 23rd. Uh, just about a week after the last battle was fought, we're fighting a battle down here on the coast. We're going to name this after frequent commenter Mr. Ombrados. You may have seen his Napoleonic 2mm army, which is, spoiler alert, it's grains of rice painted as Napoleonic soldiers. It's awesome. It's hilarious. Uh, I think I posted that on or about April 1st. Maybe I'll put a link in one of those little cool YouTube boxes if I can figure it out. Look, I'm not a digital guy. Look, I'm doing a war game campaign, 1965 style. Uh, th this is the highest piece of technology I've got, all right, is, is a lead pencil. Anyway, which I think is nice. And i got to be honest with you, I could do all of this in a spreadsheet. I'm very good at spreadsheets. But there's something about the tactile experience of slow down, man. Write it out. Take a look. Think about what you're doing. There's value in this. I could buy pre-painted miniatures, too. Where's the fun in that? 
Anyway, we're looking at uh, we're looking at the battlefield, and I just had it. I just had it. There we go. Here's our system. We lay out a four by four cards, and then we've got a nice little table here that will tell us what we're looking at. So I'm going to bring up a fresh piece of paper, and I'm going to deal my cards out right here. Uh, let me cut this deck one more time, and we're just going to deal them out. We're going to call this north, and where the black cards lie is the interesting features, and where the red cards lie. I think the Tenebrans are hoping for red cards, but wouldn't you know it, we got two, four, five out of 16, so only a third of the features of the battlefield, of the, the 16th, only a third of the battlefield has an interesting feature. Let's find out what those features are. This will be our rough sketch. We divide it into the 16th like so. And then you've got a pair of black 10s up here, and the 10s are marshes. So we've got marsh, marsh, eight down here. We've got light woods. And we've got a, a deuce, which is a hill. And then the joker is going to be a hill with light woods right here. So, oh, by the way, this is going to be the coast somewhere around here. Our scale on the map is one inch equals uh, 100 yards. So because I'm using a 30-inch battlefield, not quite the 2x2. Two two. I go a little bit bigger than 2x2. Two two. You're looking at a battlefield that's about 3,000 yards or 3,000 meters across, which is, what is that? Uh, 3,000 meters, like 3 kilometers across? Or, what, 3,000 yards uh, through 3 kilometers is uh, about a mile and a half across. So, you know, we may be 3 or 4 or 5 miles away from the coast, way down south, or the coast might be right here. The Joker is a special feature. Give me a second, I'll tell you exactly what it is. Since we are so close to the coast, and let's take a look at this again. Um, we're kind of in a vague area. If we were close to these woods, I would put more woods. If we were close to this marsh, I would put more marsh. Could be anything, could be small. I'm going to go ahead and put a pond, since I've got one of those. And actually, we're going to call this the Battle of... Uh, um, and then, oh, right. So I'm going to have a stream from one side to the other. Ah, no, that's exactly what we're going to do. i got a better idea for a special. I'm going to put a stream running from north to south. All right, it comes from here to here. And it's going to be one, two, three, four for entry. One. That means there's a stream coming out of this marsh. One, two, three, four. And on a three, that stream cuts through here. Uh, so, okay. Mm We've got a pond. Yep, we got to stick with the pond. I was hoping to do something cool. Uh, here's a marsh. And then we've got a stream. And then I'm going to roll for a road to see if we've got a road. And it's going to be mm, one, uh, one, two, three, four to see if what the road enters on. So a road enters on one, and we're going to see what side it exits from. A one. So there's, a, there's two roads coming in from this side. And we'll roll a d4 to see what side. So on a 1 and a 2. So we've got a road here and a road here. And then we'll roll to see uh, where those roads exit. This road is going to exit somewhere over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Fortunately, I've got my platonic solids. So it's going to leave on a 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this road... Oh, we got a nice complicated one here. It's going to cut along the marsh, and it's going to exit right about there. And this road, same numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this road is going to come down and kind of caress the stream, like so. So that's a road, that's a road, and that is a stream. How big is the stream? Uh, what I like to do is, on a 1, it basically doesn't have any effect on the battle. On a 6, it takes an entire... It, ooh, how do we do this? On a 6, the stream cannot be crossed except at the bridge. Obviously, there's a bridge here. 
So we'll go uh, and help. I got to write this out. One equals no effect on a six only at the bridge. And we'll say on a four or a five, it takes three inches to cross. Otherwise, on a two or a three, it takes one inch of extra movement to cross. All right. There's our D6 to find out what, how bad that stream is. So it's a fairly significant stream. Why did I write road there? All right, so this is a stream that costs three inches of movement to cross, except, of course, at the bridge. And we've got a fairly complicated uh, battlefield shaping up here. I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Lots of possibilities. The other thing we have to figure out is how big an effect these marshes have. And we're going to roll on a... Well, for one thing, the stream is going to come in from this marsh. So we're going to call this marsh... It drains out through a fairly significant stream. Let's call this one impassable for sure. And then we have a question is, how bad is this marsh? In fact, I'll put the two marsh pieces... What do we want to do? I have three marsh terrain pieces. On a one, two, three, the extra one goes here. Yeah, so we've got two impassable marshes up in this corner. And we've got one marsh here, and on a one, two, or a three, it is also... All right, so in this case, it's going to be in a one or two. No one can cross it. On a three or four, foot only. And on a five or a six, anyone at a plus one inch move penalty. So anytime you move, your first inch is spent trying to dig your way out. So on a four, this is a foot only marsh. Horses will get bogged down. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we've got some choices, some tactical decisions we're gonna have to make. And again, I said this is gonna be north. And if you look at where the battle is being fought, down here, the, the coast is obviously fairly far down to the south because you've got a road that runs down there. That road doesn't run into the river, probably runs down to some little fishing village down here. We're going to call this stream the Hombrados. Hombrados. So this will be the Battle of... No, we're going to call the bridge. This is going to be the Battle of Hombrados Bridge. Built by that famous bridge builder... Mr. Hombrados. And there's one other thing we have to resolve before we're ready to call it quits in this particular video. And that is, who's the attacker? Now, General Irwin and General Typhonis both have a commander rating of three. So it's going to be a straight die roll to see who is the attacker and who is the defender. Uh, General Typhonis rolls a four, and General Irwin rolls a five. So Irwin gets to make the choice. I said the attacker, but if you look at the way the rules for Napoleon two by two Napoleonics works, if you win, well, why am I saying if you look at it? I got it right here. Let's look at it. So here you have it. Roll a d6. If you're tied, everybody starts with more AP. In this case, everybody's going to start with 10 AP at the start of the game on the board. The player with a higher score, in this case, that's General Irwin, is the attacker. And the player with a lower score is the defender. So General Irwin, seeing that the White Queen's soil has been sullied by the grubby little boot prints of these foul tenebrans, has declared... What rot is this? We won't be having any of that on my watch. And he actually went after General Typhonis. He's an aggressive bulldog, that General Irwin. Let's see how that strategy pays out. So here is a cleaned up version of the map. It's still not, the map is not the battlefield. This is going to inform the terrain layout that we use. The terrain pieces, the physical pieces I have, are going to constrain us somewhat, but we're going to try to honor this as much as possible. I put the marshes up in the corners and along the edges, so that's going to affect our reinforcement points for this battle. The next question is, who gets which side? And as I look at the rules as written, they don't offer a lot of help. Uh, it says the player with a lower score is the defender. The defender places 10 AP... Um, 
near his base edge, and then the attacker places ten on his. So the defender places first. So I'm going to give the defender the option of starting on whichever side is appropriate. Now bear in mind, looking at the strategic map, here's how we bring this down to here. General Typhonus set off across country. country. So I think there's a, a less chance that he's going to be approaching from the south. He's definitely not going to approach from this direction. When Irwin hits him, Irwin is coming from this direction. Maybe a little bit to the north, a little bit to the south. Definitely from this direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign a probability here. And Irwin's going to take the opposite edge, whatever we wind up with here. So General Typhonus, because he's kind of coming from this way, I want there to be less chance down here. So I'm going to make this on a 1. This is where he sets up. On a 2, 3, the only question is, is it going to be more likely here or here? And because he was off road, it's going to be more likely here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 for General Typhonus's base edge. And I got a 3. So 1, 2, 3. So this is General Typhonus is going to set up over here. Then the question is, General Typhonus, is he going to th throw a strong left, center, or right hook? Left hook, center, right hook. What's going to be the strongest? And it's going to be a 1, 2 is going to be left. 3, 4 is going to be center. So Typhonus is going to go with a strong center. Strong center for Typhonus. And then over here, the question is, since this is the base edge for our attacker, is he going to throw on a 1 or a 2, it's going to be a strong right hook, 3 or 4 strong center, 5 or 6 on the left. So he's going to throw a left hook. Irwin is throwing a left hook. Okay, and remember, Irwin is the attacking. And this strong center defense is right here. Remember the stream? It costs three inches to cross that stream. You cannot cross this marsh, and only foot can cross this marsh. So if we set a reinforcement point here, remember you can reinforce, you, your boys can come on anywhere within three inches of that point. Horses, if you set your reinforcement point here, horses can't come in in this marsh. Only foot. So that's going to affect the choices of reinforcement points. Next thing we need to do is talk about which 10 AP is General Typhonus going to put on the battlefield to start. Remember, he's got nine line troops, one light, and a couple of grenadiers. The light regiment is probably not going to have a lot of effect, and he's got to start basically behind this line. He only gets to be within six inches. He's the defender. But this is an odd case where you're playing to the break point of four units versus five units. So Typhonus, because he's got, let me write that down, break, four unit break and a five unit break. Because he's got the, the advantage, he's dealing with 48 AP to 32 over here. He can afford to take a few more losses and he may want to. He may say, look, I don't care if I take extra losses. I'll take the four if I can deliver eight on Irwin, because that would destroy his force as a fighting force, and he would have a, a clear march to Sun Harbor, brief siege, he may be able to put put boots on the ground headed towards Albanopolis. Maybe. That's a little bit ahead of ourselves. The important thing for right now is that we've got to figure out which of our 10 AP we're going to drop on the battlefield. So General Typhonus, with his strong center, just lines up 10 AP worth of line infantry right along this road. For his part, General Irwin places two batteries here, thinking maybe what I can do is use those batteries to kind of hammer at people as they cross this stream. Solidify this left flank, and we can bring up boys along behind them. He put two more line infantry along the road so they can react very quickly. The next thing you do for deployment is the defender picks a reinforcement point anywhere on his edge of the board, and places the troops he wants to arrive there in the order of their appearance. The road gives you a plus one. We're going to bring the cannon on first. That's the only one we got, but it's a little bit slow moving, so we'll bring him up as fast as we can. A couple of grenadiers, a couple of more line infantry, really get this solidified, and then we're going to start bringing in our dragoons, and that's good for now. 
which means our other resource point. Now, we don't know where the other reinforcement point is. We'll get to that. It's now the attacker's turn to pick a reinforcement point anywhere on his edge of the board or anywhere on either flank. Not within six inches of a, of a defending unit. So we could actually pick up here, let's say. But I don't think we want to do that. I think the smart play here, bear in mind that he's going to get to pick wherever we choose for our flank. The attacker, anywhere on his edge of the board or anywhere. So we're going to pick here for the first one. And then depending on where he puts his other reinforcement point, the attacker can either go, well, he's going to go somewhere around here. It's just a question of where. So we've already placed down two line and our two batteries. Let's go ahead and bring on the Grenadier first. And then we'll bring on one, hmm, hmm, hmm. You know what, we're going to bring on the Light Infantry next to try and secure some of these woods. Those are always fun. And then we've got uh, one set of Dragoons. And then we're going to bring on our heavy horse. And I think that's good for that reinforcement point. We want to leave most of our reinforcements unpredictable. Once again, the defender picks anywhere on his edge of the board. And in this case, if they're going to be concentrating down here, hmm, <laughs> this is where it pays to wait and see what your enemy is going to do. We may need to task a couple of infantry, uh, well, I should say, Typhonus may need to task a couple of infantry with holding this bridge. Uh, or do we go ahead and make this our second reinforcement point for that sweet plus one? Uh, we know that our flanks are going to be secured, so I think that's probably the way to go. Let's go with... Uh, Line infantry to start. And then we've got, man, we've still got four more dragoons to bring on. We've got two line and lots and lots of horse. So let's bring on one light horse, another line infantry, and then I think we just bring on the other four horses. One, oh, other three, excuse me, two. Three. Now, off camera, I'm going to go ahead and designate names for each of these. And what we'll do is we'll pay attention. These line infantry that are battered already, those will be the last guys to come on. We want to try to... We, we can afford casualties with these guys. We cannot afford them with these guys or they'll be out of the campaign. Likewise, over here, now we've got... What do we have to bring on here? We've got two dragoons and two line infantry. We can bring them on anywhere we want. I kind of think we may want to bring them on... Hmm. We may want to bring them on up here. And just get involved in a shooting match. Or maybe down here. I, I think we may want to just kind of keep things buttoned up tight here. And hope that we can draw these guys in. So let's go ahead and make our second... Now remember... You can come on anywhere within three inches. So we're going to put this second reinforcement point three inches off the edge of the board. Is that right, defender? And then the attacker picks anywhere on either flank, not within six inches of a defender. I think that's probably the best way to go. And then because they're so pokey, we're going to go with our line infantry, line infantry, and then we've got our light horse and our light horse. And so we're going to be bringing on our four infantry first. And then those horses are going to come on, and we'll be able to send them in whatever direction we want. So we're kind of dancing, same thing, secure left, secure left. We've seen it a thousand times, but it's okay. It makes for an interesting battlefield. I think we're just about ready. I need to, you know, figure out who's who here, who's coming on when, and give some names so that I don't kind of cheat later on. When we come back, we'll set up some terrain on the table. We'll grab our dice. We'll grab our pinned markers, our disrupted markers. And we will send the balloon up for the Battle of Hombrados Bridge. The latest conflagration, the latest bloodletting, the latest loss of life and limb in the service of the White Queen. And, in, and though it's being fought on Alban soil, this is a war for the defense of Tenebran soil up here at Grand Point.
look for that in uh, anywhere from a couple of days to maybe a week at the most. Until then, I'm praying for you.